Hello friends. Today we'll be talking about constant versus immutable objects in JavaScript. And while they are separate concepts, they often get confused together. So I thought it would be worthwhile to cover these in a video together. It is my goal not to simply give you definitions, which are often forgotten. Instead, give you the intuition to understand the differences, as well as why they work the way they do. And first, I'm going to start off by showing you how I visualize code. When I see code, I visualize the shapes as well as the connections in my head. For example, this line of code here, var URL equals HTTPS joel.net. I visualize my application, which contains a variable named URL. That URL points to an object of type string, which contains the value. And the nature of a string is immutable, which is why it's represented by the lock icon. Because the value of URL can be reassigned later, it does not have a lock icon. Now let's dig into const first. Const prevents the reassignment of a variable. The value can only be assigned during declaration. Here I have a plain old JavaScript object named cat, which is marked as const. It has two properties, name and age. When I visualize this code, I would first think of my application, which has a variable named cat. That cat is marked as const, indicated by the lock icon. That of course is signifying that the value cat cannot be reassigned later. Cat is pointing to an object that contains the property's name and age. This object is mutable, meaning that its properties can be changed. So at this point, you can see that the const on cat only applies to the variable named cat and not to the object. And name points to a string and age and number, both of which are immutable. And to see an example of this, if I were to try and reassign cat to a different value, it would immediately throw an exception, assignment to a constant variable. That is not allowed. But if I were to change the object inside of cat, let's say cat.name, I can change that to something else, let's say abc, and then if I were to output cat, you can see that cat itself has changed. To make cat immutable, I can call object.freeze on cat, and here I can see it's giving me an exception, cannot assign to read only property name of object. So in this example, I have a cat object that contains a toys array. So there's one thing I wanted to show, um, even though I'm freezing the, the cat object here, if I were to call uh, cat.toys push, and I were to say um, cardboard box, this is fully legal here because the cat object itself is immutable, but the toys array is not immutable. So if I were to output cat, I can see that it does have the name Mojo and toys, and it did push my cardboard box. Of course, if I were to do something like cat.toys and try and reassign toys, that's not allowed because this object is immutable, but this object isn't. So one change we can see here when looking at this is there's now a lock icon on the object. So name and toys is now protected. Those values can't be reassigned. But if you look closely at toys, you can see it points to an array. This array doesn't have a lock icon, which means that it's fully mutable. And that's why I was able to push a value into the array. So one important thing to remember is object.freeze is a shallow operation, meaning it will only apply to the object passed in and not the object's children. To make an object deeply immutable, we're gonna to have to write a custom function for this. And by write a function, I mean copy directly from developer.mozilla.org. I'll provide the link to this in the description below so you can copy and paste it for yourself. You can also just search for deep freeze and find it through Google that way. An overview of what this function does is it just loops through each property of the object. If the object contains objects, it will then also recursively call deep freeze on those. If this function is a little bit over your head, don't worry about it. You don't have to know the internals of the object, just how to use it. So I'm gonna copy deep freeze up here. And here in the place of object.freeze, I'm gonna pass in deep freeze, which should freeze everything in here as well as the children. So I'm gonna test this by calling cat.toys and I'm gonna try and push a new toy. In this case, I'm gonna try and push another cardboard box. And I can see that it does work. Cannot add property to object is not extensible. Uh, property two is referring, of course, to the index of toys, which ball is zero, feather is one, two would have been cardboard box. And now I can see the array that toys is pointing to has a lock icon above it also. So just to recap here, the const on cat applies to only the cat variable under the application. If we wanted to make immutable only the cat object, uh, we can apply object.freeze, which is again, a shallow operation. To achieve deep immutability, we have to write our own function for that, or better, copy it from Mozilla. 
and I hope you found this video entertaining. I really do appreciate you spending your time with me. And just as a reminder, clicking the like icon will tell the YouTube algorithm that you want to see more programming videos. Not just mine, but other videos that are related to this one. So if you like programming videos in general, mash that like button. And of course, if you want to be notified when I come out with new videos, you have to click the bell icon when subscribing. Thanks once again, and I'll see you in the next video.